everybody. Um, the last time I was up here, I was winning the Grade 6 Award for Religious Education. Um, my parents are atheists. They were so confused. Um, so I launched Envato nine years ago with my husband and our close friend. Um, we were very, very green. We were very young. Um, and we basically bet everything we had that this business idea that we had would be a success. Luckily for us, it was, um, and today we have a whole suite of um, creative digital products and services. So, today, yet yeah, nine years old, we have um, the 88th most trafficked website in the world, according to Alexa, Theme Forest. Um, we have six million members, I think we just ticked over to six million today. Um, we have tens of thousands of sellers. We have 48 sellers who've earned over a million dollars. Um, in a couple of months, our top seller, Theme Fusion, is going to hit the $10 million mark, and he's done that with just one website theme. Um, he's a pretty impressive entrepreneur in his own right. Um, we have around 250 people, 180 in Melbourne, and the rest around the world, and we're completely bootstrapped. So. We've been successful. It's been a successful business. Um, but it might interest you to know that if we had to do it again, we would do things very, very differently. So that was us when we launched. Um, my husband, Collis, on the right, and co-founder, Jun, on the left. We were three designers with basically no business startup experience whatsoever. Um, we were um, selling Flash stock online. We were selling Flash. Yes, it was a long time ago. Flash was still a thing. And um, we felt like we could do it better. We wanted to offer um, better commission rates for, um, for our sellers. And we also wanted to sell new things that weren't currently available in the market. So with basically no experience and no testing, we decided to do this thing. We hired a developer and we thought, oh, this will take about six weeks. Fast forward six months, we were freelancing as designers every minute we could get to earn money. Um, at night and on the weekends, we were working on the site. Um, we hadn't launched. We'd borrowed money from my um, husband's parents. We'd maxed out our credit cards. Um, we were living in my parents' basement, and we were working in their garage. Um, we had absolutely no backup plan. We had to make this thing work. Now, today, if someone said to me that they were going to do that, they were going to spend that much money and that much time and invest that much um, with that little um, background, that little skill set, um, and that little testing, I would tell them that was an extremely risky plan. But we did it, and thankfully for us, it actually took. Um, so. We were right. There was a great big gaping hole in the market. And um, over the next few years, um, we grew very rapidly. Um, we found that once we'd sort of set up our marketplace for Flash, it was very easy to sort of take that model and the buyers and the sellers that we had and to sort of um, translate it into other verticals. That actually worked very well. And we found that sort of the key was to look for spaces where we felt there needed to be stock, where there wasn't currently stock, and, um, and just to get first to market and really try and get in there quite aggressively. And a few of them didn't work, but many did. And and, um, and that sort of takes you broadly to where we are today. Um, so I should be completely clear that we were very, very lucky. We kind of fluked it. Um, it was... Uh, it was really sort of um, very lucky that um, that we did sort of correctly define what the hole in the market was, um, and we didn't test that at all. We were really going off the fact that we'd been working in that space, we'd been selling stock, we were going off a sort of a tested marketplace model. Even then, we built in a ton of features that in reality nobody actually wanted, and that was time and money wasted. So we could have missed the boat, somebody else could have beaten us to market, we could have gone bankrupt. Corrupt. Um, we didn't, um, but if we had of, it would have taken us a good few years to dig ourselves out of that hole that we dug, and by that time it would have um, probably, you know, definitely been too late for that um, for this business idea that we had. So these days we've learnt our lesson: we test before we invest. Um, 
Now, what we like to do these days is we like to take quite a lean, iterative approach. So we launch leanly, we test, we you know get some customers, we learn everything we can from them, and we sort of pivot the product as we need to. Now, I know there are probably some lean startup purists in the room. Um, I'm going to refer to MVP. I'm really referring to it broadly as sort of an easy way to define, you know, as I say, just launching, um, launching quickly and iterating. And I'm going to do that via a case study, um, a recent case study that we've had, and that is Invado, Sto Invado Photos, which is still in play right now. Um, so, about four months ago, um, we were looking at our product offering and, as we usually do, trying to look for sort of holes um, in that. And, um, and we realised that we were offering a pretty compelling offering for anything someone might need um, for websites, branding, um, marketing. We sort of had all that stitch up, stitched up, but the one thing that we didn't have, which people need, is custom photography. And interestingly, when we asked around, there was no one who said, oh, well, Clearly, if you wanted a photo shoot, you'd go to blah. It was, you know, X company. It was always, oh, well, you know, I asked my brother-in-law's sister who said this. And, you know, I mean, it was... Um, it didn't seem to be a low-stress, no-fuss approach, which is really what we wanted. Um, so I have a background in early product. That's the sort of thing that I find really interesting. And I'm also the daughter of a photographer. I grew up with photographers. So um, we decided that I was relatively well placed to sort of take this one on. Um, it was a bit of a departure from what we normally do. And I was also doing it kind of in my spare time. But I thought, all right, it'll just be, you know, fun thing to work on on the side. Um, so I sat down and I thought, OK, what can we do here? And the idea that I ended up coming back with after a couple of hours was, OK, look, how about Uber for photo shoots? Now, I should say, I know there are some VCs in the room, and they will tell you that everyone and their tech-savvy uncle is having Uber 4 ideas at the moment. Um, it generally doesn't sort of um, say a great deal about the sort of stickiness of your idea, but I tell you this so you can see where the idea started and where it sort of ended up. So basically, look, the, the pitch was we're going to make it really easy to book a photographer and they come to you when they need them, when, when you need them. Simple as that. So the success metrics, here's what we generally look for. Is this MVP going to be a success? If it does these things, yes. Will it solve the problem? So in our case, Invato customers could book a photo shoot really painlessly. That's sort of the problem that we wanted to solve. The next one was, is the market there? So, you know, based on some really, you know, basic maths, it was, look, let's go for $1,000 a week in Melbourne, $1,000 of revenue a week in Melbourne, um, within two months, spending $20,000 in advertising and... $20,000 isn't particularly lean, I know, um, but um, we were low on time and wanted to sort of get a turnaround on this fairly quickly and it was an area we could kind of invest in to really, you know, get that high volume of customers so we could test. Scalability. So. Our audience is only, um, our customer base is only 4% Australian. Um, we're sort of pretty well spread around the world. So we knew that we needed to see, you know, a clear path to being in most major cities within two years. Um, that's sort of a bit of a, you know, if we can't do that, it's a deal breaker because it's too much, of, too much of a departure from what we're doing already. And finally, profitability. The maths worked, so we could be profitable at scale. Um, obviously, when you've got service providers and you've got um, customers, you need to make sure that what the customers are willing to pay at scale is what your service providers are willing to be paid. Um, in terms of resources, I had about 50 hours a week combined between me and two of my team, one with a background in strategy, one in a background in social and video. Um, so the equivalent of one very um, capable and um, good background startup founder, which luckily you all have already. Um, and um, I also had my 20K, which I told you about before. I also had um, some fairly good social media muscle behind me, I have to say. So Envato's reach in terms of social is pretty large. Um, I had a mailing list ready to go of 2,000 opt-in Envato customers in Melbourne out of the 5,000 roughly that we have overall. So I had that. 
So next up was figuring out our offering. So we needed to work out you know, exactly what we would be offering and how it would work. And as I say, I really wanted to get higher customer volume so we could test. So the model was, look broadly, ease, speed, low risk, one flat rate. Um, we went for $249, which was pretty, you know, pretty cheap. Um, but as I say, we wanted to sort of you know, get a lot of people in quite easily so we could learn from them. We went for a two hour photo shoot, so literally you pay $249, you get your two hour photo shoot and you get to take every photo home, use it for whatever you want except for resale. And we had a 100% money back guarantee. So really it was, oh and 24 hour turnaround time was the other thing which turned out to be really hard. Um, but you know, we did it, we committed to it in those first few weeks. Um, so, um, we did all that, we decided, okay, that seems like a good thing to do, and we launched. Next thing we did was we launched. Um, we built the bare minimum we built in WordPress, just really, really quickly, literally a couple of days turnaround. Um, I can't stress enough what a good idea it is to be able to um, edit your own website, in those, especially in those early days. Sometimes I talk to people who have spent a large amount of money crafting this amazing, beautiful website, but when they find out from their customers that their pitching is wrong, they need to wait and pay for the designer or developer to, um, to edit it for them. Um, so I would say that you're much better off going with a more basic website um, and doing it even in Wix or Weebly if you have to, but getting it live early is my opinion on the whole matter. Um, <laughs> um, so we had... Um, we had, sorry, that totally distracted, the woo was very exciting. No, it totally distracted me. Um, <laughs> um, we did voucher codes. So um, we, and literally that was just so we could track where people were coming from. We, um, and it was just a form field. The voucher code didn't even do anything except at the end when we invoiced, we took that 20% off. But it was a really easy, low tech way of tracking where people were coming from. Um, and then we spread the word everywhere we could for free. So we did that in three main ways. We sent our email out to our 2,000 existing customers. Um, we sent another out to our team and said, hey, can you spread this around to anyone you think might be interested? Um, we shared it on social, on Facebook, and on LinkedIn. And we offered um, local startup events um, to, you know, we said, look, we'll come and shoot for free, and, um, and we'll just hand out little business card-sized flyers. So that's basically what we did. And we didn't have our first job for about two weeks and I got quite stressed. Um, if you're anything like me, you sort of get into your head, this is the, this is the idea the world has been waiting for. <laughs> why, why isn't everybody, you know, jumping over themselves to get on board with this immediately? And there's this real temptation to want to sort of fiddle around with it immediately. Um, we, you've got to factor in lead time with many of these things. With this, it turns out there is about a two hour lead time, a two week lead time, I wish there was a two hour lead time, um, a two week lead time. So once um, we sort of factored that in, um, we were sort of, we calmed down a little bit and after our first two weeks, we got our first customers. Um, so we got four in that first month. All four came in the second two weeks and we treated them like royalty. So. Um, you know, we gave them their shoots for free. A whole team of them turned, a whole team of us turned up and, you know, taking notes and making sure their shoot was perfect. Um, we, you know, and nothing was too much trouble for these people. And they all kept on commenting on what great value for money it was. $249 and they get like four people turning up all super excited. Um, but we learned something really interesting from them and we learned that they were all small businesses, which was actually really interesting because as you would imagine, the vast majority of the people on our mailing list are industry, they're designers and they're developers. Um, and so we thought, well, clearly none of those people are actually interested in this offering. And when we talked to them, we found out that, yeah, they, they already knew how to brief a, they already knew how to brief a photographer. They knew how to find photographers. They were working with photographers. This service wasn't actually that useful for them. But for our small business customers, it really was. And I can't, I like quite frequently I talk to um, people starting startups who say, yeah, I talk to my customers. I send out questionnaires to them all the time. 
There is nothing that replaces going to where they work, going to where they live, and talking to them for a couple of hours. And not just learning about your product specifically, but learning about everything that you know they're doing in that space. So we were talking to these customers about what their needs were generally, you know, broadly in the sort of marketing, personal branding, um, space and we learned a great deal. So what we learned from them was that they actually wanted help finding a good photographer. So it turns out that's a really unpleasant process. Um, they wanted really clear pricing. That was also confusing for them. Um, they wanted to know exactly what copyright they were going to get, um, and they wanted the security of working with a company like Envato. Turns out when people are really unsure and they're stressed about the process, they go for a recognisable brand. So that's why you always see tourists at Starbucks. Um, so, I missed a page. Okay. So once we had our small trickle of customers and we knew what they wanted, we thought, great, small business, now we're going to explore our customer acquisition, see if we can put that 20K to work. Um, so we tried a few things. We invested in AdWords, we invested in Facebook, we invested in YouTube, we invested in events. Um, and Basically, we found that um, Facebook video was a really big win for us. And we did a couple of videos. We did um, one which was more a case study, and we did one which was a call to action, like literally me staring at the camera saying, we've got this thing, it's great, we'll take care of you, you know, just give us a call. Well, send us an email, we don't do phone calls. Um, and um, yeah, like we found that actually um, we were getting really good, um, uh, it was get very easy to get customers onto the site. We got about 48% returning visitors and about four minutes spent on the site on average. So we thought that was pretty good, but they weren't converting. We were still having to pay a lot in order to get conversions. Um, and we sort of hypothesized that maybe this trust thing was something to do with it. Um, maybe, you know, the people that knew Invato went, great, you know, fantastic, that's a company I recognize, I'll go with them. Um, and, but these people were like, well, I don't know Invato from Adam, I don't know whether I can trust these people or not. It was still sort of not tipping them over. So we'd had a booking form up until that, that point where you could just book straight away. And instead, front and center, we tested a couple of landing pages with an inquiry form. Just tell us what it is that you're after and someone will e email you back or even call you back. And that tipped us over into suddenly having a huge number of inquiries, which led to a huge number of bookings. Now, long term, this was a lot more labor intensive than what we wanted. You know, that whole booking form's a whole lot simpler. Um, but um, it seemed, you know, we were getting a lot of customers, a lot of people to learn from, so it was, it was a big win. So we quickly reached the point where we were booked out. We couldn't really take any more bookings, and we thought, well, let's test our price point. Um, we were really sort of, you know, pretty low at that point, $249. And so we thought, well, what happens if we just increase it by $100? We're booked out anyway. We need to scale back. Let's see if we raise the price high. Um, and, well, higher, and um, it, bookings reduced ever so slightly, but they still um, were almost as fast. So um, we knew at that point that we still had some wiggle room in terms of the price point of where we could go, which was really good news because we still had to figure out that piece around, the, um, around our photographers and making sure that they got a good rate and that we could earn a little bit of a profit in the meantime. So, next up we refined the process. Um, we stopped testing pricing because we needed to take a few steps in order to scale. Um, and we had some problems to solve. We had to, we needed to outsource our post-processing. So it turns out that that was actually really time consuming. It took as long as the shoot. Um, and it turns out the photographers really don't like having to do that. They find that really irritating. So we thought, well, if we can, outsource that, then that solves, you know, some problems for us. We can get our photographers out on more shoots and, you know, we've got a more compelling offer for our photographers. Um, we needed more photographers. Daniel, our lead photographer, and the people that he was um, working with were completely rushed off their feet. Um, 
So we needed to address that and we needed to automate the briefing process um, because that was obviously very time consuming. So the outsourcing post-processing, actually we managed to do that quite easily. It turns out there are quite a few businesses that do that. Um, we, we tested a few and found a great one in Canada that could deliver it back at 10 cents a shot. Um, it took five days, but because we learned from our small business customers that they really didn't care um, if it took one day or five, that really you know, freed us up and we were able to do that, which took a big load off our shoulders. So the next step was finding photographers. Now I was quite nervous about this because this is obviously a disruptive product and my father's a photographer. I had to call him up and say, hey dad, you know, I'm about to tell all your photographer friends about this thing. Um, he was very supportive, but I think for the first time he was really happy that I took my husband's surname when we got married, that I was now a Taid rather than a Marmaris. Um, and we decided to advertise on Facebook um, because we knew that a lot of photographers were there in various Facebook groups um, and it just seemed like the right place to test. But obviously, I was quite stressed about that as well because unlike a job ad, they can actually reply and tell you exactly what they think of you. Um, but we were relatively confident that what we were offering had real value for them. So we felt like photographers wanted, you know, literally to get briefed by Envato, to shoot, to upload and to invoice. Um, they wanted easy extra work in between their existing clients. They wanted no lead generation, which is really time consuming for them. They didn't want to have to teach the client how to brief, which um, is often something that, you know, we're doing that right now for them. And they didn't want to have to deal with post-processing. So we put our ad up on Facebook. And disruptive products will polarize people. So we had, this totally should be shared around. This company should be named and shamed for its disgusting behavior stressful. We had, yeah, it's basically a side income you, would get, you wouldn't get otherwise. I never market myself towards these kinds of clients because I can't be effed. I don't swear anymore. I have kids. Um, with the marketing and all the extra post work, Glad Vado takes care of this for me. So yay, really, you know, positive reaction actually defending us. And one person who even defended us a lot more. So yeah, as a side income, $340 for two, three, four hours isn't bad by any measure. No need to be overly butthurt about it like some of the earlier comments. So yay, defended on Facebook. It was great. I was very happy. Um, so we actually got some fantastic photographers really quickly. Um, quite a few photographers, especially um, photographers who were working for newspapers, who sort of got on board with the model quite quickly and, um, and you know, had quite a lot of experience to share and really liked the model. So within probably about a, um, a few days of posting, we had a good 50 photographers, um, you know, after a phone screen and an interview and sort of, you know, some other testing, they were ready to go and we were able to sort of um, get our external photographers working away. Way. And so far, that's working really well. Um, so the next step's really scaling. And that's where we get to today. Um, we're thinking about it, and there's, but there's really one tricky problem still left to solve. And that is, can we automate the briefing process? And that's a real toughie. So when we first started this project, I thought, oh, well, how hard can it be? You know, really good online forms, you know, really good online education, some videos. It turns out that unless you're talking about events or family shoots or a few other areas like that, photo shoots are really very highly variable. And so far, we haven't found an automated way to replace um, to replace that whole process that we're needing to go through with new customers. And we need to. In order for this MVP to be a success, we really need to um, because, you know, otherwise we can't scale it the way we would want to. Um, so we're going to test more. We're going to test more. We're going to try some other stuff, and we're going to see what happens. But that's really the power of Lean. Um, you get high insight for a low investment. So we came this far over three months um, with you know, a, quite a low investment, especially by a company of our size standards. And we're in a really good position now to you know, try and solve this problem if we possibly can. And I have to say that if it wasn't for this scaling issue and the fact that we need to internationalize quickly, I would be saying, look, this product definitely has legs. We should launch this thing properly. Um, you know, happy customers, happy service providers, really good shape financially. It's, you know, it's a win. Um, but this scaling issue, I just don't know if we're going to solve it long term. So we'll see. Maybe I'll tell you about it next year at Sidstar. Um, 
So in the meantime, we're launching in Sydney as of today. Um, it's the next step in scaling. Um, so there's a voucher code, 20% off, SID start rules. Um, I'm going to keep the price at 349 for a good month. After that, I may start fiddling around with it. So if you want, to, if you want it for 349 then book it in the next month. Um, if I can leave you with one thought, it's this. You're going to have many ideas in your lifetime. An entrepreneur is going to have many ideas in their lifetime. So don't gamble like we did. Test your idea so you can invest your money, your time, and your expertise in the right idea so it can be a success. So that's it for me. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm going to be at the Invato stall during breaks if you want to come and say hi or ask me anything. Okay, thanks.